Hakan, thank you so much for joining in the Hyperloop. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Thank you, Blake. Thanks. So you're, you're with the Hyperloop Manchester. Who are you? What do you do right now? Uh, I'm Hakan, as you said. Uh, I'm electrical and electronics engineering student at the University of Manchester. Uh, I'm holding over Hyperloop Manchester as co-president and electronics team advisor. Uh, as co-president, I'm responsible of, uh, you know, making sure that like the teamwork is flawless. If there's a point that one of our sub teams gets stuck, uh, I come and play and talk with the head of related sub team and most of the, of course, that specific sub team members. Uh, and uh, I'm seeing like what the problem is and I'm trying to find a solution to that specific issue. Uh, and besides like along with my team fellows, I'm trying to find new ideas which we can implement to the team to boost up the teamwork and, and acceleration of the team and uh, improve our outreach impact, sure. And um, these two things are quite uh, important points in a team, I guess. Uh, and like um, as electronics team advisor, I'm basically working on the design of electronic system structure of our Hyperloop pod and share my knowledge uh, with my team members and uh, the workload uh, between electronics team members. You sent your, you know, kind of a startup uh, and a team. What are some of the prominent points of Hyperloop Manchester? Hyperloop Manchester is like really different uh, from most of the Hyperloop teams. Like there are like, as you said, important points. So like besides Hyperloop pod competitions and events, we highly care about knowledge sharing and strong connections in our team uh, to implement these uh, purposes in, uh, in, in, in like in our team. Uh, there are like important points uh, we have created. Like the first one is Hyperloop Manchester alumni. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have initiated Hyperloop Manchester alumni community, which is a vast group containing our old and gold members who have contributed our team in the past years. Uh, so like for now, uh, like we have only last year members, of course, because like, you know, we are one and a half year old team. Uh, yeah, despite uh, like despite of this fact, like I mean, including Hyperloop Manchester, we have over one like 100 and, 110 members in total across the world in Hyperloop Manchester community. So thanks to Hyperloop Manchester alumni, our currently working team members have opportunity to build new connections, right? Which is like quite important for their future carriers uh, who have experienced the teamwork in Hyperloop Manchester team and in the real industry currently. So uh, like thanks to our alumni, we have many connections in global companies uh, around the world, which makes the communication with companies much more easier for us. And secondly, we care about knowledge sharing uh, internally and externally. We aim to make Hyperloop Manchester an environment in which our team members not only work on the Hyperloop pod, but also explore their interests. I mean, as long as members are done with their main tasks in their main sub teams, they are free to get any task in other sub teams, you know, like in doing so, the members can contribute another side of Hyperloop project uh, as much as they can. Uh, at the same time, they can learn and improve uh, themselves uh, in uh, their interested areas in the Hyperloop concept. So, which is like quite, uh, quite big opportunity for their, uh, uh, like for their experiences and for their like, um, uh, self-development, I can say. Finally, uh, we deliver and uh, organize master classes and professional talks in our team. Uh, master classes are delivered on uh, the Hyperloop related subjects, uh, like starting from like fundamentals and specifying in the use of master classes subjects uh, in Hyperloop concept. So the master classes are delivered by delivered by our student team members. So, I mean, uh, besides master classes, we organize talk sessions delivered by the real professionals in the industry. These professionals are mostly our supervisors in the team. Um, in doing so, uh, we have chance to attract more real professionals into our project, get more professional and academic support from them. For instance, like last year, we have organized a talk uh, delivered by uh, Alphabet X member, who is Jack Hidery. Uh, this year, we will have more talks uh, and started with a battery battery related talk uh, delivered by uh, Richard Fields, who is our supervisor, 
So we always put also like we always put our master classes and talks on our YouTube channel to make them accessible to anyone who is willing to learn because of our like knowledge sharing purpose in the team. So far, our master classes and talks like got quite good reactions, to be honest. And uh, we will continue in next semester, semester. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. And you've shared with me a couple of the screenshots from these uh, virtual master classes. Yeah. And I think that's the perfect kind of uh, thing to do during these this time period and uh, the difficulties faced with meeting in person and, and exactly. sharing knowledge. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. We are holding like our events like online right now. So yeah, yeah that's a bit pretty. What are, uh, besides holding all the events online, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face? Uh, I mean, like the biggest challenges, like frankly, we had a few issues at the beginning. Like, I mean, during the establishment of the team, like for instance, while my friend uh, Botsu, who is the other co-president and I were establishing the team, uh, I mean, with the consistent help of our head of research, Shakir Jan, he is like, he was just, you know, helping us and he is in our team as well. Uh, from scratch last year in September 2019, we had like one of the toughest moments in our you know, life, to be honest, I can say like, as everyone knows, it's like quite uh, difficult to, you know, create something from scratch, you know, uh, you should just, you know, build the infrastructure first, and then you should start working on the project. So if you aim big, like, and want your creation to constitute a massive impact across the world, then your job is like even much more difficult, unfortunately, in comparison with the normal projects. So we had like we had these difficulties since we had no history, no culture, uh, did not have uh, enough team members at the beginning. Uh, also, like we were newly established team, and not sure, and we were not sure, of course, where to start. Uh, even though we like we knew the hyperloop concept, uh, like in terms of technical and. Um, like business, like a business aspect details. So uh, plus like our work has coincided the global pandemic, unfortunately, which made like everything much more difficult. Uh, for instance, we have been affected in terms of workshop access. This is because like we were planning to start uh, building prototypes starting from September, 2020. However, like because of coronavirus, all the facilities at the university has been closed. Uh, in addition, strict restrictions has been put into action. And uh, nevertheless, like, I mean, we didn't like lose our hope and uh, recreated our project plan. Now uh, we have plenty of things uh, that, we are that we are currently working on. Uh, thanks to our hard work and unlimited hope. Uh, and despite of the coronavirus, uh, we are now aiming even bigger, uh, such as trying to create a long established uh, team culture, uh, more than a team, like to, to create a, like to create something more than a theme. Uh, and more like a family and trying to get our team involved in the worldwide Hyperloop community, starting with uh, like starting with Hyperloop, uh, European Hyperloop Week, sorry. Um, we, will, we, we are aiming to be uh, in European Hyperloop Week in July, 2021. And like uh, in addition to all that, we had a long way and during our project so far, we have developed the team remarkably by beating like every obstacles in our way continuously, I can, I can say. And that is why, like, so far, I'm so proud of myself and all the team members we had last year and uh, have this year uh, in the Hyperloop Manchester. So this is because, like, nothing could stop us since each team member keeps being ambitious enough. And now we are seriously innovating as we work on the Hyperloop uh, project that we have. And, and currently, we have a large family which consists of uh, around like, uh, again, I said like 110, like over 110 members across the world, uh, including our Hyperloop Manchester alumni. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's an amazing family. And I, I think uh, the Hyperloop community does kind of treat it. They all want to help each other out. And yeah. um, so what got you interested in Hyperloop or your co-founders? Like what? What got you interested initially? I mean, while I was just, you know, scroll, like scrolling down on Google, simply, <laughs> I came across a, a new innovation of Elon Musk. Like, I, as we all know, like, uh, he is like a brilliant visionary. And I wanted to delve into the Hyperloop concept more. Uh, as I learned uh, more and more by myself before founding the team, I, I really am, a, a, like, attracted to the concept since, like, it is, like, quite efficient, like, in terms of, uh, the performance, efficiency, and cost. So 
uh, Hyperloop is a breakthrough indeed. I mean, like, especially I really like the way how Hyperloop concept uses the magnetic levitation uh, and electronics uh, inside of the project. So I like, I mean, it's, a, it's like splendid masterpiece, I guess. That's really cool. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of different industries all wrapped in one little tiny product. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. And so what cities would you like to get connected? <laughs> Yep. Like I mean, according to our plan, like we are like I mean, uh, designing a port, uh, like planning to I mean connect, uh, Manchester and London. Like it's like like so like uh, simple. I mean like because London is the most popular city in the UK, and Manchester is like uh, our our base. So like uh, like we are just, but we are aiming to do that like reducing the travel time to thirty minutes. Uh, and yeah, and currently, since like we are designing our first Hyperloop port, we are focusing on only the UK, but we'll focus on on the entire world in the following years. I can I can assure you that. That's really cool. Yeah, that'd be great to have a very quick journey between the two cities um, yeah. for dinner. <laughs> Just go back and forth for dinner or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, when you're building these pods and the, this team. Uh, and you kind of think about the bigger picture of connecting Hyperloop and cities, what do you see as uh, possible um, the offset of the cost of Hyperloop? How can you think you, it can be made cheaper? Or have you had any insights yeah. like that? Like there are some like facts like defined by Elon Musk himself. So I want to talk about those uh, in essentially, like, like in, in essence. So like the ports and linear motors are relatively minor expenses like compared to the tube itself. So like in comparison with the railway track, uh, the prominent advantages of um, the tube are that, I mean, it can be built above the ground on the pylons and, and in uh, prefabricated sections. So building them on pylons uh, helps us to avoid the need to buy land, which is like, uh, which is like a massive cost saving, you know, uh, for instance. And uh, moreover, like in comparison with a uh, like high speed rail, rail, rail system, a uh, hyperloop path uh, causes like small disruption to the land, which can be like in the level of a tree or a phone pole, you know, like it's so, so that like so tiny. So like it is uh, environment friendly at the same time. I can, I can tell those uh, points, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's always hard to um, think about the whole system and cost savings, but um, yeah, these, you know, just a pylon <laughs> versus, you know, yeah. a tunnel or a train track will save a ton of money over the long yeah. run. Um, how, when you're thinking about Hyperloop, how do you think it will change your routines or uh, way of living in the future? Uh, in terms of the impact of Hyperloop, I mean, like, I mean, it will take some time. Uh, implementation of Hyperloop concept, like, uh, because it's not hard to implement to the normal life, right? and to make the concept feasible for our normal life. Like whenever it becomes viable and a part of our lives, it will be the start of the transportation systems, like which is not like in, in like inevitable result of Hyperloop project. I mean, this is, this is the reality. I think the impact in the UK specifically uh, will be quite effective uh, since like in the UK, uh, trains are commonly used. They are like quite popular, popular and they are like cheap to use as well. I mean, like if you have a look at Hyperloop, it is a cheaper and a more effective alternative uh, of especially trains. But of course, like uh, to all um, transportation types as well. So all in all, I can say like everywhere, like everywhere will be even much closer to one another. Uh, than today in the world, thanks to Hyperloop. I can say this at the end. Yeah, it, it really will. Um, just to be able to go those great distances distances within, you know, they're under 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's just crazy. Everything um, will be much closer and closer, like a year by year, believe me. Mm -hmm. Technology, technology, technology. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how can people support Hyperloop Manchester? Uh, like we, uh, I just want to introduce something that we have just done. Uh, like this week, uh, we have opened a page for our team on GoFundMe.com. They can donate uh, our project on GoFundMe.com like quite easily. Uh, we expect donations uh, to our project, uh, like I mean via GoFundMe.com, uh, for our research, technical, and business uh, divisions. Uh, we want to use them 
uh, for our research aspect, like uh, we want to just you know collaborate with uh, UK scientific institutions. Uh, plus, as for the technical aspect, uh, we want to just you know of course afford some technical components. And for the business and outreach, we want to improve our promotional uh, area, and we want to get uh, our uh, designs, our promotional uh, videos more professional. So this will affect the, I mean, the donation will affect those things. Uh, they can just you know, get more information about Hyperloop Manchester on our website, which is like hyperloopmanchester.com. They can uh, click on the email icon in the footer of our webpage uh, to contact us via email, which is the uh, like preferred uh, contact way. Uh, alternatively, they can follow our team progress by following our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram pages. Also, we have opened uh, a Twitter account as well. Uh, but like currently, we are uh, building uh, the account, so they can follow us on Twitter from now on as well. Well, Hakan, yeah. thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, but before we go, I want to uh, add one thing. So I want to uh, thank our committee members, if it's okay, and our all team, like all, all team members, uh, like I want to thank uh, like our committee members, Botohan, Gerdan, Abraham Levy, uh, Thomas Simpson, Oliver Laria, Harry O'Brien, uh, Shakir Jambayazid, and Hak Jin Sim. And the other 60 team members that we currently have in our team, I want to thank them especially for like, I mean, their effort and being ambitious all the time during the project and during the uh, like tough times that we are having so far. Perfect. Well, thank you again. And uh, no please, worries. everybody, go support Hyperloop Manchester and uh, the great work that their Hyperloop Manchester alumni team and the current team members are doing. Exactly. Thank you so much, Blake. Thank you for having me.